I just always think that in this, whatever industry you're going into, whether that's wine, whether that's beauty, whether that's fashion, whether it's cars, literally any sort of industry, you're not the only player in the market, right? There's always going to be competitors in the market. So having a really strong brand story is important to differentiate yourself, but most importantly, emotionally connect with your audience. So that's the short way of describing why um, storytelling is important. And mm. I think that comes from different touch points. So, you know, when you're reading, uh, pack, you know, words on packaging, whether you're reading words in a paid ad, whether that's a beautiful model holding a product, or maybe it's a video, or even if it's an influencer using your product in their own reel, that's all storytelling. Yeah. That's super interesting because um, I love, uh, you know, this idea that, you know, sometimes we feel like our industries are a bit saturated and there's a really nice, I think it's a Marie Folio quote that it's like the world needs that one thing that only you have. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, and I was just having a chat to one of my mentors this morning and we were talking about that as well. Like, it's like, you know, people will find you and connect with you and resonate with your story and see themselves in your brand. So, you know, when we have those moments of, oh my God, everyone's doing what I'm doing. It's kind of the storytelling that helps sets us apart. Totally. It gives you the background info about what your brand is about, but also what is your offering? And also how do you use your product? So that really sets your brand apart. Yeah, I love that so much. So you said your background was in beauty. Talk to me about before Pick Studio. What was the deal? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so I'm 32 now. I want to yeah. go way back when I was about 17 or 18. Um, this was when blogging was still a thing. Remember? Oh my God, I love this already. <laughs> yeah, I know. I cringe at the thought of it, but I think it really set me up for the next sort of decade that I worked in beauty. So mm. I started off with a beauty blog. I just loved makeup and just trends and catwalks and backstage and that sort of thing that yes. led me to working a lot with beauty Australian beauty brands or even international brands that had Australian offices because I think blogging was still a really new thing 14 years mm. ago it wasn't even a thing it was like words in your own yes. website right so that yes. was and then that propelled me into doing really cool brand experiences having relationships with brands um, from there, I worked in PR. I've worked in media agencies. Uh, my first media job was at Shop Till You Drop. So I was uh, beauty. Oh, cool. And then awesome. Assistant there. I got made redundant there, which is a very common theme mm. in media land. It happens all the time, probably twice. Yes. Uh, from there, I went to women's health as beauty assistant. I was beauty editor on um, the carousel on the launch team of Beauty Crew, uh, oh, beauty yeah. director on Marie Claire. And then I got made redundant again in uh, <laughs> April, 2020. And I was always itching to do my own thing, right? I was always curious about freelancing, about um, shooting branded content. And so mm. that was the perfect push for me to do my own thing. Yes. Um, this was also peak COVID. So I knew getting a job was going to be super difficult. Mm. I gave myself a hard deadline and a hard budget. I was like this, I, I think I gave myself two grand out of my redundancy payout. Is that all? Yeah, I gave myself, oh, no. myself $2,000 and I was like, you've got to set yourself up, do the whole agency thing, um, bought a URL, like bought a domain, set my own emails up um, and then just started my agency from there. And what it's, it's really interesting because when I first launched my agency, it's nothing like what it is now. Mm. I first launched my agency to sort of be like flaunter, right? Where yeah. you can access... Um, imagery, but we also shoot the imagery. That yeah. didn't pay off. So we focused on shooting e-com imagery. I realized when I worked in editorial, um, product imagery looked amazing, mm. right? Swatches mm. looked amazing. But why is it that when you go on to priceline.com.au or David Jones or Adore Beauty, why does the e-com imagery suck? Why does yeah. it look so different to editorial imagery? So yes. that's what I wanted to bring together. So oh. editorialized imagery that looked amazing mm. for fashion, beauty, lifestyle brands. Cool. So, yeah. So I started doing that and then that evolved into doing, hey, do you also do campaign imagery? Do you also do videography? Do you also do photos with models? Do you also do copywriting? Do you also do press release? So it just like bang, bang, bang. And you realize from- And you keep saying yes. You're like, absolutely, I do I that. Oh, yeah, God, I'll, I'll give it a it go. out. <laughs> yeah. So it's all, it's all, it just snowballed from there. And it's, it was all about taking 
the next opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. And then here we are three and a half, four years later. Wow. So how did you get from agency creative content to, you know, I guess building a brand from the ground up? Mm -hmm. Um, So into the uh, consultation process. So I'll Mm. go to founders, you know, they'll come up with some ideas. For example, oh, I've always wanted to launch a skincare brand that has this ingredient. You know, I work a lot with, um, you know, a lot of my family has this sort of skin ailment. Uh, Yep. I'm thinking about launching this brand. So we'll, we'll just sort of like use the hour or whatever time to nut out what the problem is and then build a brand from there. It's it's a lot of consulting. It's a lot of back and forth. Mm-hmm. I just sort of see it as like, I'm just trying to make your dream come true. Like I yeah. can't apply myself and be like, that business idea sucks. Like yeah. I'm just trying to be like, yes. You're the hype girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm the hype girl. I'm the professional yeah. hype girl. And I my job is just to tell you, okay, that's great. But have you thought about this? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, your competitive set looks like this. So maybe mm-hmm. in, that, in your branding, you don't use that. You use pink instead of blue. Yes. So it's a lot of consulting. Um, a, Some founders have a really clear idea on what their brand is, what their brand looks like. Some have no idea. So I think it's quite bespoke in the sort of advice that you give each of the founder. Yes. I will have to say, though, most founders lose steam. So yeah. it's it's not like a hundred percent of people that come through mm. are like, oh my god, yay! We go from like consulting to branding to packaging design to you know they do samples, we'll build them a website, photography. Not a lot of people make it from zero to a hundred. Yeah, I would yes. say like five percent do. Wow, really? Or less, yeah. People mm. always run out of steam. We have people being like, oh, um. I can't find a good packaging manufacturer. And then they just sort of lose lose steam or they have a family or they're like, oh, oh. my husband's going to build a cafe instead or, hey, but, you know, people wow. just. Yeah. 